Hi everyone, I'm Derek Cartwright and this is Curator's Corner. And today I thought we'd spend a little time talking about the important role that women have played at the Timken Museum of Art. And this is a good moment to do that because as many of you know, Megan Pogue, our director, has designated 2020 as the year of the woman at the Timken. And I've been really excited about the kinds of programs that we've been able to organize around this theme. And it's a good moment because many museums in 2020 have chosen this as an appropriate theme. Um, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about why and then why so important for the Timken to acknowledge um, the special role of women in its history. So I'll share my screen with you. And as I say, um, it makes a lot of sense for not just the Timken, but museums like the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. and the Baltimore Museum of Art have all had a similar programmatic emphasis because, of course, 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which gave women the right to vote. And so I'm showing you on the screen right now one of the literally hundreds of graphic art posters and other illustrations that were used to help organize a massive effort to bring the right to vote to women. And these efforts go back to the 19th century, certainly, but this one is early 20th century. And by August of 1920, women were given that um, right to universal suffrage. And uh, of course, we're excited about that. We feel like um, this is something we wanted to celebrate. And the Timken in particular, which has had so many strong women play vital roles in its history, um, feels even more correct for this institution to take on this charge at this time. Uh, I don't need to tell anybody who's watching this video about the enormous role that uh, women played in the founding of the Timken Museum of Art. I'm showing you three photographs. I think they're passport photographs for Irene, Amy, and Ann Putnam who were central to the development of museum culture in the early 20th century in San Diego. Uh, Irene unfortunately passed away fairly early on in the sisters' time in the city, but Amy and Anne together were a dynamic force for acquiring great old master paintings, first for what became the San Diego Museum of Art and later for the museum that they imagined they could create, which is now the Timken Museum of Art. So between the two of them, they are responsible for bringing um, what has to be counted as the most significant group of old master paintings uh, to this city, and we'll always be grateful to them. It's interesting to me that in the early 20th century, when the Putnams were most active acquiring works for San Diego institutions, uh, they sort of missed the idea of acquiring work by women artists. Um, they were very happy to bring work by Giorgione or Rubens or um, Goya to San Diego, but they sort of missed the idea that they could also have found work by Artemisia Gentileschi or Elizabeth Vizier Labran or somebody like that um, to this city. And so I think it's our job to correct that oversight. Uh, and I, I'm really excited about that project. But in the meanwhile, I think we have to give them first credit for having established the strongest possible basis upon which uh, collections could be built in this city. Um, I have long wished to fill the Timken galleries with work by great women artists. And in the temporary exhibitions over the last few years, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that we've been really um, trying to address the gaps that are in our permanent collection galleries by bringing really fantastic works uh, to our temporary shows. So just if you saw the Blessed Beast exhibition in 2016, you saw work by Kiki Smith, or if you saw Rococo Rivals and Revivals in 2018, you saw work by Chris Antiman. If you saw the Metonymy show, this project we did with the Sonnabin collection, you saw work by Candida Hofer, and it wasn't an accident. I, I just felt like these were the um, right artists to complement these larger efforts that make us think in new ways about the permanent collection which the Putnam sisters helped us create. And we're not done with that work, of course, and uh, I really won't be satisfied until every gallery in the Timken is balanced out with work by great women artists. Um, and even in this year, we've had a lot of fun making sure that the exhibitions are more representative of a broader spectrum of women artists' creativity. So um, 
if you saw the exhibition called um, Captivating Women that I curated with the students in one of my courses at USD, you will notice several works by women artists, including the one on the left that I'm showing you here by Belle Barancianu called Lee of 1928. So um, my students were drawn to this work and I am too. Uh, Barancianu herself was a little bit like the Putnam sisters, right? She taught art at Francis Parker School, uh, decorated post offices and other public spaces with murals during the WPA period when the Treasury Section of Fine Arts was commissioning artists to uh, bring large scale decorative paintings into public buildings. She was a big part of the artistic culture of this city. And so the fact that we were able to present this particular painting in conjunction with Captivating Women was really a great treat. And I'll be very grateful for a long time to Sandy and Brown Dykstra for lending this and the other works to the exhibition that we had up until the health crisis forced us to close and all the museums to close in Balboa Park. Um, but when we reopen, which we think will be relatively soon, we're going to make an effort to continue this emphasis throughout the permanent collection galleries. So for instance, when you go visit the American galleries, you'll see work by Bessie Pottervana, who was one of the great uh, women sculptors of the late 19th, early 20th centuries, and we'll have one of her works on view. Similarly, we'll have a painting by Rosa Bonheur in the French galleries and a work, thanks to our good friends at the San Diego Museum of Art by Rachel Roish in our Dutch galleries and in this way begin to think about how we could productively enlarge our collections and give a, a broader representation to women in our hangings at the museum. So I am extremely um, excited about what this means and I hope you will be too and invite you to come back and tell us what you think about this when the museum reopens this summer. Um, but I've also been thinking about the Putnams and about Megan Pogue and her role at the museum um, and the way that women have shaped the Timken for another reason this week. And that's because um, Nancy Ames Peterson, who was really the first formal director of the Timken Museum of Art passed away last Friday. And uh, because I was fortunate enough to know Nancy and really regard her as a great friend. Uh, I'm very sad about that, but I'm also drawn to thinking about what a huge impact she had on our community. Um, and like the Putnam sisters, her um, works will always be on the walls of the Timken Museum of Arts, because after all, it was Nancy who arranged for the museum to acquire its great work by Guercino, The Return of the Prodigal Son, but also um, paintings like the Fitzhenry Lane view of Castine Harbor in town, or Mrs. Gage by John Singleton Copley. That was all Nancy's work. And at a time when there were very few women running major art museums in this country. Nancy Ames Peterson was doing a fantastic job of guiding the Timken forward. So we have big shoes to fill and I'm excited about the work ahead, but I think this is a good moment to pause and just be grateful for the incredible women that have helped shape our museum. Um, I am. And I hope you're all safe and healthy and I look forward to seeing you soon at the museum. Thanks.